Roberts right now on News Talk 820 WBAP. WBAP WBAP.com. OPEC nations and their oil producing allies in a meeting Thursday opted to stick to the current schedule of modest production increases. The decision coming despite oil prices rising as the European Union considers banning Russian energy imports. Prices are expected to rise further for oil, gasoline and other fuels made from it. All right. Well, inflation is already putting a strain uh, on your uh, your billfold, right? Your pocketbooks. Cost of food, no, clothing, transportation, everything is up. So, the price of gas. And let's talk about diesel. One big reason is the price of diesel, um, it just continues to go up. It's the fuel for trains, trucks, uh, that transport just about everything you eat, you wear, you use. And uh, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. Jim Grundy is a trucking industry expert, CEO and owner of Sisu Energy, LLC. Um, Mr. Grundy, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. All right. we got to talk about this because, uh, you know, those of us, uh, you know, my truck is gas. It's not diesel, but... A buddy of mine um, drives a diesel truck, and I was talking to him on the cell phone the other day, and he was filling up, and it was like 150 bucks. And you know, that's not a commercial truck; that's uh, that's his private truck he drives every day. So it's no wonder why why we have empty shelves in the stores. But it looks like it's going to get worse. Is that wrong or right? No, you're you're 100 percent right. Uh, well, this morning we're filling up between twelve fifty to thirteen hundred dollars for a two hundred gallon tank out in West Texas, and and uh, you know, we're based here in Fort Worth, but most of our work is done uh, in West Texas, South Texas, a little bit in New Mexico, um, and the, the reality is is our inability to keep up with uh, consumer demand, along with a lot of negative sentiments coming out of Washington regarding. Uh, uh, you know, petroleum, fossil fuels, and trying to push the Green Deal, add in a Russian-Ukrainian conflict, and, you know, that's going to disrupt oil supplies around the world, and this is the perfect storm. Well, let's just cut to the chase and be honest with each other. Is the our current administration in Washington, are they uh, making it easier or harder uh, for Americans to get the goods and services uh, through trucking? I, I do not think they have a macro understanding of what they are doing and how it impacts the end users and consumers out there. For instance, if you consider that 72% of all Americans right now are check to check and 40% of Americans are on fixed incomes, how in the world are folks right now check to check and on fixed incomes getting by with with 50% increase in food, utilities, housing, rent skyrocketing? Uh, I, I think what we're looking at is the, the, just the tip of the iceberg for something that much more economically catastrophic uh, to the constituents here in the U.S. Um, let's let's expand on that a minute because this is your business. You deal with it every day, all day. Um, what can the general consumer, somebody that's not involved in politics, not involved in the fuel industry, or um, anything like that. I'm just talking about people that uh, are listening to us all over the state of Texas and coast to coast via the apps. What can they expect? How bad is this going to get? We fully expect uh, diesel to top somewhere eight dollars um, by midsummer. So we're talking here the next sixty days. We think diesel prices will be at eight dollars a gallon with uh, uh, five dollars, you know, for regular unleaded five to five fifty. Uh, the, the, the reality is the answer is right underneath our feet. Um, we have enough reserves under uh, if they would let us drill and they would cut permits. You, you'll hear these narratives, of, well, we're extending leases. Well, having a lease on land to do fracturing is one thing, but getting a permit from the U.S. government right now takes nine months, whereas if we get that same permit from a private landowner, it takes 12 days. Right. So what they're doing is they're limiting our ability to frack and, and – uh, uh, garner the resources it's going to take to get this economy and these prices stable because we just lost 7% of our oil uh, from Russia. But that's not a, that's not the only problem. It's all of Europe now is, is banding together, and they're going to uh, pull their allegiances from Russia uh, energy 
sources. So now that's going to they're looking at us. And the opportunity for the U.S. to be a dominant, to be the most dominant uh, energy provider in the world is now, yet we have an administration that would uh, rather, you know, more or less stick their head in the sand than uh, look at the uh, look at this as an opportunity. They've weaponized it and they politicized it, uh, this recovery and energy consumption. And the reality is we're petroleum-based world. Everything we consume, we use, we build is on the back of oil, gas, uh, and it's arrogant to think otherwise. No, I agree with you. In another life, uh, long before radio, I was an oil and gas attorney, primarily specializing in overseas concessions. But I, And I've tried to inform people to the degree I can. Just because the White House comes out and says, well, you've got you know 2,000 leases or 3,000 leases or whatever, you don't need any more. A lease is not a drilling permit. <laughs> I mean, uh, people don't understand a lease, an oil and gas lease, does not automatically mean you're going to uh, drill uh, on that property or a portion of it. So uh, I think a, a lot of this comes from the fact uh, that most people don't understand how um, the oil and gas business works. And, well, why should they? I mean, the extent of their knowledge is they go to the gas station and fill up, and it's way too high, not realizing those gas station owners only make 2 to $0.04 cents a gallon. Um, the line share is in, in taxes, and, and it doesn't matter that uh, you know they come out. If we started drilling right now, it would take up to a year for us to see any benefit from that. Um, but at least we, uh, we stop the, the bleeding, so to speak. Um, I, I'm afraid, based on the fact that too little too late, um, we're going to see even more empty shelves. I don't know how any transportation company makes any money at $8 a gallon for diesel fuel. You know, I could be wrong. That's not my business. But, you know, you tell me that somebody's going to absorb that, that cost, and it's probably the person buying or um, buying in the stores, right? Well, it's two parts. So right now the prices are rising so fast uh, after the close of business. So everything we do today was negotiated yesterday as we're a, we're a fairly large carrier and we're, we're partnered with Pilot Flying J. But our prices are set the day before for the following day. Being that it's a global commodity and it's traded overnight, we wake up in the morning and what we negotiated yesterday is no longer good because the, the, uh, I think uh, two times this week we've gone up over 40 cents overnight. So wow. that's eighty dollars. That's eighty dollars right there for an owner operator or for a company to increase in fuel that's unaccounted for. So in the short term, drivers pay for it. In the long term, as these things get remedied and fixed, uh, unfortunately, we're seeing it on the shelves. The cost of goods are skyrocketing. The uh, uh, something as basic as a a juniper tree that was three hundred dollars last year. I know that sounds weird talking about juniper trees. This morning, I was I was reading an article. They're up over twelve hundred dollars a tree right now due to the, tra- the tra- due to the transportation of getting those trees to uh, various folks' homes and landscaping and whatever else. Something as basic as trees is what we're do- we're talking about here. Forget, uh, uh, you know, uh, general items like meat and clothing and all these other uh, items that we use every day. Um, it, it's the folks that are on you know these fixed incomes and living check to check. That if we're not careful here, here in another year, because this is this won't be remedied in the next year or two. No, this is this is here for a long time, and and people don't realize we we can't make up one hundred thousand truckers when that is one of the fastest retiring group of people out there right now. It's an aging workforce. We're doing nothing to attract younger drivers. We had two years of no classes for new drivers. We're running out of supply. Um, and our government just seems to keep telling you, well, in six months it'll be better. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen in six months. In six months, heating oil to heat your house when you're in the winter, uh, it's going to be astronomical on top of your gallon per gasoline is going to be over five fifty six dollars for the average consumer, and, and diesel is going to be over 8 That's what we're all expecting. Yeah. It, um, uh, I had heard, or I guess I read, um, and I don't know, I'm not in that business, some truck uh, truck drivers could make up to twenty five thousand dollars per week due to shortages. Is that right? Uh, our top guy last month did eighty nine thousand dollars in a month. In one month, our average, our top twenty percent, uh, they were right at about fifty five grand in one month. And these guys work about twenty one days out of the month. Wow, wow. 
Well, uh, but the the short term is that uh, that fuel cost comes out. Well, no, you're a company. They're not independent drivers, are they? We are 100% independent drivers. All we hire is owner operators. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, and what we've done is we've identified that uh, owner operator individually is is very vulnerable to pricing uh, abbreviations like we're seeing now with oil and gas and everything skyrocketing. But we bring a bunch of owner operators under one house under our authority. And now we're the largest owner operator fleet in oil and gas industry. And so we have leverage and buying power and we can extend those those opportunities to the owner operator that he couldn't do by himself right so i think you're, you're going to see more of that and these independent uh, owner operators are going to have to fall under the roof of some of these bigger companies uh because they're going to need protection here in the, in the very near future because uh the, the they can't they can't support uh paying retail pricing for gasoline and diesel and uh at some point our consumers and everyone at home uh, there needs to be relief and there is nothing on the horizon. I mean, we we're eleven and a half percent inflation last month. That was the reading, I believe, correct? Uh, yeah, it was way over eight and a half when I checked last. But um, I, I, yeah, I think it came at eleven and a half percent, which is the highest ever in the history. And we understand, like, okay, what's the correlation? When was the last time oil was over a hundred dollars a barrel? Jeez, <laughs> under under no, it was under under Obama, right? Yep. Okay, so. There's there seems to be a correlation here. This uh, this war against uh, petroleum based products that they're doing on a political level is damning to everyone. It's uh, it's not doing anyone any good, and it's just arrogant to think that we're not a world that uh, that moves on oil and gas. Well, uh, that's those are the facts, and uh, people with agendas and narratives generally try to get as far away from facts as they possibly can. Uh, final question, talking with Jim Grundy, trucking industry expert, CEO and owner of Sisu Energy, LLC. Um, do you have any advice for the uh, everyday consumer as they fight these continuing, uh, these fuel prices continue to go up, store shelves are still empty, everything, everything's a direct result of what came before it. Any uh, Any advice to them at all? Yeah, it's something that we've been preaching to our staff. So, you know, we recently gave inflation raises across the board to all of our staff, uh, and that wasn't enough at the time. We were given 7% raises. Uh, I think they need to start there with their employer. I think there is a responsibility that all employers need to look at uh, with their with their customer base, and their customers are their employees. They have the right to work anywhere. But the second part is at home. Everyone needs to take a hard look at what you're spending your money on and, you know, if that means uh, going out to eat one night less per week or finding ways to save as much as you can now, I, I would strongly recommend everyone doing so because it's going to get worse. Well, we're not done yet. This is just where we're just seeing the macro effects of what of what having uh, having a supply chain infrastructure and flux looks like. Uh, great information. Enjoyed talking with you. Hopefully we can uh, touch base again. Jim Grundy, CEO and owner of Sisu Energy LLC. We appreciate your time very much. Thank you.